Hi, and welcome to today's lesson on loops, or repeating a process. Computers are very good at repeating processes, doing the same thing over and over again under certain conditions. A loop is a programming structure that handles repetition. The C language offers three different types of loops, and we'll explore them in this video. Okay, here's uh, just a, a quick rundown of the three different types of loops that we have in C. Okay, we have our first loop is called a while loop. And with a while loop, you repeat something as long as a certain condition is true. And you always test the condition first. And here's the basic structure of the while loop. Okay, we'll get into this in much more detail, one at a time. The do while loop also repeats something as long as a certain condition remains true. But the difference is the do while loop will always do the loop once, at least once, before testing the condition. The while loop tests the condition first. Okay, and we'll see examples of these and why you would use one over the other. And a for loop is when you want to repeat something a certain number of times. So let's start out with the basic structure of a while loop. Okay, the while loop kind of looks like a for, uh, or excuse me, like an if statement. Okay, you see that we have a condition, we have the word while instead of the word if. We have a condition, and then surrounded by curly braces, we have the statements that we want to do. So, while this condition is true, do these statements, okay? The difference between while and if is, if we had if there, if the condition was true, it would do the statements once and then skip to the end. With while, it's going to do the statements, and then it's going to come back up and test the condition again. And if the condition is still do true, it does the statements again. So, while the condition is true, do these statements. When you get to the end, go back up and test the condition again. Is the condition still true? Yes, do these statements. If the condition is false, then it skips over the, the loop. So here's an example, and I'm going to break away from the uh, thermostat uh, example that I've been beating to death in these lessons, and we'll switch to a simple alarm system. Okay, you know an alarm system, like a home uh, security system, a very simple one, um, has an armed switch. Okay, and let's not talk about the fancy keypads, let's just say it has a key that turns a switch on and off. Okay, so you want to come in here and you're going to look at this and say, well, while the arm switch is equal to on, okay, remember I told you that the equal sign doesn't mean equals, it means the assignment statement? Well, when you put two of them together, that's what means equals, okay? So while the arm switch is equal to on, then it's going to come into here. So if this condition is true, it's going to sound the alarm and it's going to turn on the light, okay? So our alarm sound will be on, our alarm light will be on. Okay. Now you don't want to just do that once because well, what happens if they turn the key switch off? You, know, you have to be able to disarm the system and you don't want to just do it quickly because if the system is still armed you want to keep repeating this process. So what will happen is if you get down to here and the arm switch is on, it falls into the loop, it does this, it does this, it comes back up and says hey is the arm switch still on? If it is, it does this again and it keeps repeating this over and over again. When, if the, the customer comes in or the owner of the house comes in, they put their key in and they turn off the arm switch, okay, then it breaks out of this loop, comes down here, and does these two statements. These are not part of the loop. These are after the loop. And again, we use indentation to mark the boundaries of the loop. The, the C wants to see the curly braces. That's what the computer uses to know the boundaries of the loop. We use indentation as a visual aid for us. Okay, remember the computer doesn't care about indentation, the professor does. Um, the computer cares about the curly braces, and of course the professor cares about that too, because it doesn't work if you don't know them, right? So, as long as these, this condition is true, it does these. If we were to get to this line and in the program and the arm switch was off, well, we would never even go into this loop. Okay, so it would just, just skip over here, and yeah, it would turn off the sound and the light, which are probably off to begin with. Now, a do-while loop is very similar. Here's the basic structure of a do-while loop. We have the word do. We don't have a condition up here because it's going to do this no matter what. It's going to do it always one time. Okay, then it comes down and tests the condition and says, do I want to do it again? Okay, so it always does it once. The condition is, do I want to do it more than once? So, in this example, I'm going to say, uh, let's say we're asking the user to uh, enter a positive number, okay? Don't worry too much about printf and scanf. Printf prints something on the screen, and scanf reads the keyboard and sticks it into a variable, in this case, temperature. Don't worry about the details of that, because we're actually not going to use those, but just for the purpose of highlighting what the loop does. 
So it's going to say, enter a positive number. It's going to wait for the user to type something in. Whatever they type in goes into the variable called temperature. And then it tests the condition. Is temperature less than zero? Okay, less than zero means it's a negative number. Okay, I asked for a positive number. So if they gave me a negative number, and this condition would be true, it's going to go back up and do it over again. Say, so, you no, know, I asked you for a positive number. So enter a positive number. When they do enter a positive number, a temperature that's, that's greater than or equal to zero, okay, then it will break out of the loop. Now we use a do while loop in this case because we definitely want to ask for information at least once. So we want to do this at least one time, and the question is, do we want to do it over again? Okay, now a for loop is used when you want to do something a certain number of times. Okay, so here's the basic structure of a for loop. We have the word for, we got our curly braces with all the stuff again, just as the stuff that's going to be repeated if the condition is true. And then, since we want to do it a certain number of times, we have to say, well, what is the starting value? The test count is kind of what, what is the ending value, or what, are the, what is the condition for repeating this loop? And then, how do we want to change that count? Do we want to add one to it? Do we, you know, there's different ways that you can change that. We're probably going to use uh, always just adding one, so we'll keep it simple for for loops. Okay, so here's an example of a for loop in C. I've got the word for. Okay, this is my beginning count value. So I've got a variable called C. It has to be an integer type variable. You can't do a loop two and a half times. It's got to be a whole number. So here's my integer type variable called C and it is assigned the value 0 the first time through. So C gets a value of 0. Here's my condition or my test. As long as C is less than 10 it will go into this loop. So we start out, C has got a value of 0. Is C less than 10? 0 is less than 10 so it does these two statements. It turns the LED on and it turns the LED off kind of flashes the LED. Okay, Then it comes up here and C++ means increment C, add 1 to C. So C had a value of 0, when we do this it now has a value of 1. Then it evaluates the condition again. Is C less than 10? Well 1 is less than 10 so it does the loop. Okay, Turns the LED on, turns the LED off. Comes back up, increments C again. So now C has a value of 2. Is 2 less than 10? Yes it is, so it does the loop again. Okay eight more times it goes through this, now we've got a value of nine in here. Okay, is nine less than ten? Yes it is, so we go through this, we get up here, C++ says increment by one, so now C has a value of ten. Is C less than ten? No it isn't, it's equal to ten, so we don't go into the loop, instead we drop out and skip over the, the rest and end up here. Okay. So just like with if-else statements, the first thing you want to do is make the structure. So with a while loop, you make the structure. You've got while, open and closing parentheses for our conditions, opening and closing curly brace for what to do under those conditions. Okay, and just I usually put a little comment there saying this is the end of the while loop. Okay, so there's filling in the blanks. Here's my condition, here's what to do when the condition is true, and I had a couple extra lines there. Okay, so make the structure, fill in the blanks. Make the structure, fill in the blanks. Okay, with a do while loop, same thing. You make the structure, so here's do, opening and closing braces, word while with parentheses for my condition, and a semicolon. Okay, and fill in the blanks. So make the structure, fill in the blanks. Here's my condition, here's what to do when the condition is true. Okay. Same thing with a for loop. You start out with the word for and a set of parentheses and a set of curly braces. Okay, here's all the stuff. Here's my beginning count, here's my condition or my test, and here's my change or my increment. And then here's what to do if the loop uh, value is true. Now when I said that this blinks the LED on and off, it'll flash an LED ten times. Okay, realistically, computers operate really, really fast. So if you were to do this, this would happen so fast you wouldn't even see it blink. Um, you wouldn't see the LED even turn on. It would just go on and off really, really fast. So in a real situation, if I wanted the LED to blink and have it be noticeable, I'd have to put delays in here. And we'll, we'll get to that later, but I just wanted to focus on the loop. Now, the rules for semicolons are exactly the same as they are for if-else statements. Okay, A semicolon is like the period at the end of a sentence. It says this is the end of the statement. Now if you look at this, this is the first line in the while loop, it doesn't really end the statement, so we don't put a semicolon there. Okay, Just like on an if statement, you don't have a, a semicolon after the condition on if. So while this condition is true, do these things. Okay, You do have semicolons 
after the individual statements because these are self-contained statements even though they're within the, the bigger while loop they are statements of their own so they get semicolons okay a do loop again this is not the end of the statement so we don't put a semicolon here we do put semicolons after the individual statements within the loop and we put a semicolon at the end of the while condition because this is in fact the end of the statement now you look at this and you say, Tom, there's an inconsistency. I got the word while with a condition and the semicolon. But a couple of slides ago, oops, I have the word while with a condition and, oh, there's no semicolon there. Well, it's consistent. The rule is consistent because this is the beginning of the statement. So there's no semicolon there because it's not the end. Okay, this while is the end of the statement. Okay, so don't tell me, well, it's inconsistent because I have the word while. This word while goes at the end of the loop in a do while loop. Okay, so it is consistent. Okay, and the same thing with a for statement, with a for loop. The word for and all your stuff in parentheses here is not the end of the statement, so we don't put a semicolon there. We do put semicolons after each individual statement inside of the loop, and we put semicolons as, uh, I, I, yeah, I know it's not the end of the sentence. Um, just like a period has more than one meaning in English, you know, it can mean something else besides the end of a sentence, while a semicolon uh, has different meanings here. So within parentheses, you do put semicolons to separate these things. Okay, if you just print out this page from your notes, uh, in, in the handout I've got uh, all of these pages, if you just print this one and keep it as a reference, it tells you, here are the three loops, here's why you would use each loop, Okay, the, here's the difference between while and do while, and then here's the basic structure of each loop, and you can see where there's no semicolon, where there is a semicolon, where there's no semicolon, where there is a semicolon. Okay, so this would make a great reference sheet. I highly recommend that you print this out and keep it in your notes. And so, your task now is to follow this do while loop. Okay, do, watch this video. Well, you've already done that once, okay? Read over the notes. Analyze the examples. Look for patterns, relationships, rules. Think. Think about how this stuff works. Okay? And if your understanding is less than 100%, what do you do? Go back up and do it again. Okay? Don't just blow it off and say, oh, I'll figure it out another time. You won't. Okay? Things build, and everything that you do builds on the previous information. So you might as well learn it now and save yourself a lot of trouble. So do this over and over again as many times as you need to until your understanding is equal to 100%, or, well, not less than 100%. Okay, and that's all you need to know about loops, and uh, now you're prepared to go and do your homework and get ready for your lab prep for this week's activity. I'll see you next time.